Google Sites Tips and Tricks. Stand out with these tips. Are you ready to take your Google site to the next level? Whether you're building a website for your business, portfolio, or school project, today I'm sharing some powerful tips and tricks that will make your Google site stand out like never before. Plus, I'll be covering some advanced features like navigation options, creating custom themes, and embedding forms. So, let's get started. First, let's talk about templates. Google Sites has introduced several different template options to give your project a head start. To access these, simply click on template gallery on the top right of your navigation site, and then you can explore different categories like business, personal, work, wedding, education. You can pick out one of these templates to have a head start. Next up, we're going to be proceeding with a simple student portfolio template. Now, once we choose a template that we like, we will have options for building our navigation options. A clean and intuitive navigation bar makes all the difference, and Google Sites allows you to switch between a top bar and a side menu. To customize this, head on over into your settings and choose navigation. From there, you can adjust the colors placement to suit your style. You guys can see we have a sidebar and if I click on the settings or the gearbox icon, you will see your navigation options. Now this is a side or a top menu and you can also choose the color that you want to use. Whether you're using a side menu or a top menu, you can choose your header to be colored or not. Now if your navigation menu has several different pages added, then having it as a top menu can seem a bit out of style. However, if your navigation menu does not have a lot of sub pages that are going to be included, then you can add it as a top menu because it looks clean and simple. Now that we have decided on this, we're going to begin customizations by adding our logo on the top left. I'm just going to be calling our site Lily's and this is going to be Lily's Photography Portfolio. Now, once I've done this, I am going to change the default theme where it says classes and I'm just going to click on pages on the right and then I'm going to remove these pages because they are not necessary and I'm also going to remove all the nested pages within this like so. I am just going to delete them one by one. Now, once I've done that, I can proceed with my own customizations. Now, let's make a bit more professional by adding a logo and a favicon. Your logo can be text, but I always recommend adding your own logo. Even if it's simple text, you want to add it as an image and you also want to add it as a favicon. Your favicon is the little icon displayed in your browser tabs and this is included in your store or your website or your portfolio's branding. So for this, you can again click on the top page and you're just going to go into settings. Once you go into settings on the top right, you can click on brand images. From here, upload your logo and favicon. If you don't have one, you can go into Canva and then search for logo. And your favicon is just a simplified version of your logo. So for example, if this is the logo that I'm going to be using, and I'll show you guys how we're going to be using this. I'm just going to take this logo and change the F to a L. And then I'm going to write lilies at the bottom. Then I'm going to click on share, click on download, download it with a transparent background. And then for the favicon image, I'm just going to remove the text at the bottom and click on share, click on download, download with a favicon image. And once we've done that, we can also reduce the size a little and then click on download like so. Now I can go back and click on upload and upload both of these images that we have downloaded. Then after that, I'm going to upload the favicon image like so, which does not have any bottom text. And just like that, we have optimized some of the visual elements of our Google site. Next up, we want to insert collapsible sections to organize content. You can use this to tidy up long pages or FAQs. For this, you can click on the Insert tab and then choose Collapsible Group or Collapsible Text. This can help you in expanding content if the visitors are going to find it necessary or else they can keep the visual clutter closed down. And 
I'm just going to click on collapsible group and then I can click on my text. Let's say this is going to be our portfolio for photography and I want to add photography styles like this and then I'm going to change the heading to a larger one. I'm going to customize the font and alignment to the center. Then I can add different text sections here. So in this, I can proceed with different options. So I might want to include a list or I want to maybe write my about me section instead of having an entire section that is visual, you know, visually taking up a lot of space, I can remove it and then just type in the about me. So I'm just going to use chat GPT, write a about me for Lily's photography like this. And we're just going to wait for it to generate some sample content for us. And in the meanwhile, let's move towards our next section, which is going to be adding a image carousel. If you want to showcase multiple images in style, you can add a image carousel. And usually I like to do this for the top tab. You can see on the right, you have the option to insert an image carousel. And first you can add or upload your images. So for this, I'm just going to go into my folder and I'm just going to upload a couple of images that I have. We're going to go into upload and upload our images like this. And whatever images you want to add, you can do that and your carousel will be added. Ideally, you want all of these images to be in a landscape mode because carousels look best in landscape. Then you will see in your carousel, you have these dots at the bottom, which can help people in navigating through your images. You can also duplicate this and set it accordingly and even make it a smaller image carousel and include information about the images in the carousel on the right side. This is going to help you in building nice image heavy websites without having to add several images in a list without keeping extra content in your website. Now. After that, you want to enable Google Forms in your Google Sites to engage with your customers or with your viewers, whether it's for surveys, registrations, or feedback. Embedding a form is really simple. Simply go into your Google dashboard, and I'm just going to go into Google over here, click on my apps, and then go into Google Forms. Now, I'm going to create a simple get in touch with Lily. If you want a photo shoot, leave your email and we will contact you. And then the question in this is going to be what, not what, just email. The answer is going to be a short answer. And then I'm going to add a secondary question, name. And once I do that, I'm just going to let it be saved. Then going back into my Google Sites, I'm going to scroll down, click on Forms. And then this is the form I just created. I'm going to select it and then click on insert. Now my form has been inserted and people can get in touch with me as well. Now this enables you to build a fully customizable sites. And last but not least, you can even customize a theme. So you can go into the theme tab on the top right and customize to a certain style. So your website looks cohesive and that is how you can build an amazing site on Google. Not just a amazing site visually, but it will also function seamlessly too. So make sure to try out all of these features and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more tips like these. See you guys next time.